and we have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. I'm Ann Northrup. And you know, we made a lot of history last week, and we're going to make some this week because our special guest is Kasha Jacqueline Nabagasera, who is the founding mother of the Ugandan gay movement. You're going to want to stay tuned for this. Uh, yeah, we're very honored to have her here with us. But we have other news that we'll get to after the interview. We'll talk about how marriage is open to same-sex couples in all 50 states and the territories now, but there are some pockets of resistance. Yes, some governors are issuing executive orders exempting state workers and others with religious objections from having to have anything to do with us. Is that legal? We'll discuss. Uh, meanwhile, a jury in New Jersey has declared that uh, conversion therapy is fraud. Yep. Uh, the Episcopal Church has approved two liturgies in the church for marriages of same-sex couples. In what Andy is calling other news of minor <laughs> miracles, well. the Mormon Church is donating a little money, just a little, to the Utah LGBT Center, and the St. Patrick's Day Parade in New York looks as if it will finally open itself to an actual Irish LGBT group after 25 years of protest. Uh, six protesters were arrested at the White House uh, uh, protesting the detention of LGBT asylum seekers. The Fire Island Pines invasion by drag queens turned into a protest against gay traitors. Uh, Catholic gay activists are not happy with the Vatican's working document on the family that's being discussed in October. And Andy is going to review the John Singer Sargent exhibit at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Very gay. <laughs> uh, but joining us now is Kasha Jacqueline Nabagasera. Uh, you are the founding mother of the Ugandan gay movement. We talk so much about Uganda. Uh, and you've been at it since 1999. You founded a lesbian group there called uh, Friend. Uh, F Friends and Rome, Uganda for Freedom lesbians. And Freedom, Freedom and Rome, Uganda for lesbians. I apologize. And uh, eventually worked with also with uh, Smug, uh, Sexual Minorities Uganda, shortly thereafter. Co-founded it with David, the late David Cato. And you've just started a physical magazine called Bombastic, which is your nickname in <laughs> Uganda, but this is so in a country where a lot of people don't have the internet, uh, they, can, they can get this, and uh, as is under your name, we have a, a, a website called kuchutimes.com, which is about LGBT issues in all of Africa. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. And congratulations, because the reason you're here, or one of the reasons you're here, is because you were one of the Grand Marshals of the New York City Pride Parade. Uh, we actually have a picture of you with some of the other Grand Marshals, uh, Ian McKellen and Derek Jacoby. Uh, how was it being a Grand Marshal of the New York City Pride Parade? Uh, um, it was a stuck, um, uh, amazing, excruciating somehow. <laughs> Um, because it, it was a mixed reaction for me. Really? It was. Mixed? Um, yes, I had so many emotions running through me. Happiness, joy, and at and some point sadness that I'm doing this in a country that is not my own country. Yet at the same time, it was a historical moment being here when the Supreme Court uh, decision was coming out. So waving and seeing all the flying kisses, the, the flag, the love shown to me, and I'm like, why can't I have this in my own country? At the same time, it was giving me hope to continue to fight that one day I also get the same love uh, I received last week uh, in my country. So those were the mixed reactions. Uh, and, but and you are having a pride parade in Entebbe, of all places, yes. uh, this year. Tell us about that. The third one in Uganda. Uh, it's actually the fourth. Um, fourth. I started the pride parades in Uganda four years ago because I knew there was never going to be a right time for us to have the traditional pride parades uh, walking on the streets, uh, Kampala Street, who we'll definitely be beaten or killed or even arrested 
interested. And so I told my community we can always have a pride in a different way. We don't have to march on the streets because we need to be, to be alive and we need to be protected. So I suggested that we have a parade um, uh, in a botanical gardens where we could be able to come together as a community and wave our flags. And also just to celebrate but also to remind ourselves of the work ahead of us. And so the first parade was distracted by the police. Um, 15 of us were arrested. Uh, but um, after, after the first parade, we still had two more where instead now the police is protecting us because we've had dialogues with police about um, their duty to protect us as citizens and if they see any of us doing something criminal or illegal then they can arrest us and so for the last two years police has been protecting us and I'm looking forward to going back home with the goodies I've gotten from New York Pride here <laughs> to share with my community back home and you know, go on and celebrate. And when I interviewed you at the Pride Parade, one of the, I was asking activists, uh, what is the focus of your activism? And you said that we just want to be protected by our government so that we can do our work. Uh, are you able to do your work? Right now, it's really very difficult. We're working in a difficult uh, uh, environment and situations because all our gatherings are being closed down by the government, workshops, um, uh, even just gatherings for drama and culture are being closed down by the government. So we are working in really hard conditions. And we don't know what will happen uh, in this parade. The last two we've been protected, but situations keep changing in Uganda. And all we need right now is just something very basic for us to be protected. And the government has the, as a duty bearer has this, um, this duty to protect us to be able to carry out our work. As much as our work is uh, regarded as illegal in Uganda, it's not illegal according to the laws of the country. So we must continue to see to it that we change that situation. Now, we think of Uganda as a dangerous place for LGBT people. We know about the murder of David Cato. We've shown pictures of his funeral and what happened there. Uh, and you are certainly a very public figure in Uganda. Uh, what is daily life like for you and your colleagues? Are, do you? Uh, exist in fear? Do you are you able to live a, a regular daily life? Well, you can't live a daily a daily um, life if you're openly gay in Uganda. So I have to to use very safe transport. I cannot easily walk on the streets like I'm walking on the streets of New York because so many people have vowed, have, have threatened to kill me. There's a lot of death threats. So I have to protect myself, and so it. I've limited my life. I'm not living a normal life. I cannot go to openly markets to shop because people identify me and people have vowed to, to hurt me when they meet me. So you, do, you cannot live an openly gay life or a normal life in Uganda if you're openly gay activist. And do you see any progress? Uh, we hear that the kill the gays bill may come up again because you have elections coming and we're great scapegoats for mm. uh, uh, politicians. Uh, is that going to take you backwards? Is there any forward movement? What do you think? There's been a lot of progress, even with the law, the kill the gays law being up there, because it brought the visibility to the movement. And it also brought the discussion on, on top of agenda, because now people can easily talk about homosexuality without fear in marketplaces, in taxi, in cafes, in schools, and all this. Yet at the same time, the visibility has also caused the backlash because now people are more aware. But what has caused the backlash is the panic that was put into the society about um, LGBT people. And this panic came from mostly evangelical pastors who came from the United States who caused the panic into the society and said that uh, homosexuals are here to recruit your children. Homosexuals are here to, to diminish family values. Homosexuals are here to spread diseases. So the, the visibility somehow caused the backlash because of the panic that was caused into the society. But there's also a fear that since you're going into elections, the law might come back. There's already a, a draft in the cabinet that could be uh, presented to the parliament anytime soon. And we've seen in the past where politicians have used the anti-gay issue as a ladder for political gain. And so we are, we are really mindful and um, very alert about uh, September because that's when the campaigns are going to start. So we are very mindful that any time it could come out. And uh, we, we are strategizing and we, we are even evaluating ourselves about how we handled the first law what can be changed and what can we do better. Um, so we are very mindful that this issue is going to come up. We've already seen uh, very many religious leaders who are willing to fund a referendum if the government is not bringing back the law. So 
we've seen all this coming out on the media where uh, leaders are saying that the government must do something about the law because we went to we went to court and um, petitioned the constitutional court and won the case which was not really it did not go down well with the society. So many people are petitioning. We've seen members of parliament themselves petitioning the Speaker of Parliament uh, to bring back the law and to, to, you know, to, to bring back another law in Uganda. So it's not over yet. It's not over yet. Why do you think, I mean, and, uh, that American evangelicals were so welcomed, their message was so welcomed, uh, this is an outside power, and there usually is a kind of a pushback against that, especially on a continent where people have freed themselves of colonial power. Why was that so welcomed in Uganda? I think it was welcomed in Uganda because they took advantage of a very poor country. So they brought a lot of money that the money had hidden agendas and they took advantage of a very Christian nation because they had failed to, to, to win the battle here in the United States so they had to look for another place where they could uh, where they could win this and so it was easy for them to come and plant this hatred in a poor country where they would bring a lot of dollars and drive their agenda so it was easy for Ugandans to really embrace the Americans because they, they, they came with all this beauty um, the way even the preaching and telling them causing even panic when you want to 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 really create hatred in a society go to a society that is already stuck with poverty and then tell them if you want to get rid of these people the ones who are bringing abomination to you was this the atmosphere in which you were coming out in 1999 uh, do you remember a time before the evangelicals took hold there? Because I never, and I was never in a closet, so I never got a time to come out. I, uh, and this language, I never even knew this language of a closet. I first got to know about this language of a closet when I grew up about 20 years, because I never knew that something like a closet existed. And so in 99, when I discovered that homosexuality was illegal in Uganda and Africa and the world, I got so interested in finding out why my sexuality was really a big issue. And that's when I found out it was illegal. But by then, it, the, the attack and the panic was not as much as it is right now. Uh, well, I think you're right that a lot of it is because the evangelicals were failing here and were looking for new territory, and I think that accounts for some of the timing of it. But you and your colleagues have done a brilliant thing of standing up to uh, the American evangelicals by bringing a lawsuit against Scott Lively, who is on trial now in uh, Springfield, uh, Massachusetts, for uh, exporting this kind of hatred to uh, Uganda. Interfering with American foreign policy, essentially, is, the, mm -hmm. is one of the charges. Yes, it was important for us to, to hold them accountable because a lot happened after they came and caused all this panic attack in the society. We saw, uh, we saw violations escalating. We saw very many people being evicted, very many people losing their jobs, and even the media played a big role in exposing people perceived to be gay because they wanted to show people that these are the people who are going to recruit your children. Yes. These are the people who are working in abortion clinics because they told them this is what we do so it was important for us to hold them accountable because they had made already a bad situation worse and it did not only stop in Uganda we've seen them going to other countries for example in Russia where they did the similar yeah. thing so the only way to stop them from moving around the world to to create all this propaganda and hatred was to hold them accountable and thank God to the Center for Constitutional Rights who came and and alerted us about this law that we could use to hold them accountable we are now um, going ahead to sue them and it's going well and thank you for pursuing that uh, we get mixed stories from all over Africa. Some positive this week will mention that Mozambique has decriminalized uh, mm -hmm. homosexuality. Uh, other countries are considering following Uganda in criminalizing, uh, further criminalizing uh, gay people. What is your sense in a more global way about Africa of, of what's, in where global, we're headed? Um, I think it shows that um, Africa is, is not, it's not a generalized situation. Uh, and also people should know that what happens in one country affects what happens in another region, in another country. Like you've said in Uganda, when the law was passed, we saw countries like Ethiopia, like Kenya, coming out and saying they were also going to propose tougher laws, like what had happened in, Kenya, in Uganda. But then when we see something happening in, uh, in Mozambique, uh, it shows us that there's also some progress that is being made on the continent. We've seen uh, former presidents 
coming out and saying that they wish they had done um, something pro or, or supportive of gay rights, for example, um, former president of Namibia, former president of Botswana. So it shows that as, as much as in some area it's really getting worse, other areas, I mean other regions are not following suit. So it's, um, it's, we've seen what happened in Gambia. Uh, it's, it's getting worse in Gambia, but if you see what is happening in Mozambique, it also gives us hope as a continent that we shall reach there. We shall reach in, there. In the Gambia, the president says he wants to slit our throats personally. Mm. Um, so um, you actually take this magazine physically around the country uh, to isolated areas to bring it to people at great risk to yourselves. What mm. is that like? Uh, well, it's uh, it's interesting because um, <laughs> it's interesting because when I came up with the idea of this magazine, it, I felt tired. I felt tired of the media because myself being in the media is is really not a big deal because I've learned over the years how to protect myself because I'm so visible. But the media has been exposing most of my colleagues, um, most of my community members who do not have this kind of measures that I have in place. And I've seen so many of them suffering, so many of them being disowned. So I. I was like, instead of complaining about the media, it's time for me to do something about it. And so I decided to bring a different narrative to the media, to give a different narrative of what this general society is getting from the media because it's all biased, it's all lies. So I wrote on my social media and um, told my community, why don't we tell our own stories since they've decided to expose us. Let them expose us. Let's expose ourselves with exactly the facts, the truth, and maybe people will start to understand us. We need to change the attitudes of the people. And it was interesting, people were like, this is perfect, let's give it to them. And so we received over 500 articles. It was amazing and overwhelming. Mm. And I said, let's put it out there. We need something attractive and something that re can resonate with Ugandans. How do we do this? And so I said, I need some volunteers, people who are in two media. So people from different organizations. We all belong to different organizations who are a team of 10 who are working on this um, uh, magazine and the TV and the radio. So I said, let's make it attractive. Let's put our stories there about coming out, about transgender issues, about religion, about being gay and a parent. And it was amazing to put it together. It was too much work, <laughs> but it was all worth it. And so when I put out a call for volunteers, people were like, I'm willing to go. And it was coming to, for, to Christmas time. And the government was proposing to bring a new anti gay law as a Christmas present. Mm. And so we said, let's also give a Christmas present uh, to the society. And so 168 volunteers were like, we are willing to go out and give out this magazine. Yeah. So it was fascinating, people going to dioceses, religious institutions, going to schools, going to homes, going door to door, giving on the streets. Then we had to go to parliament. I had to go to the president's office. I had to go to the minister of ethics and integrity. I don't know if you are aware, but Uganda is the only country in the world with this ministry. Minister of Ethics and Integrity, and he started threatening me, saying that he was going to arrest me because I'm promoting homosexuality, I'm promoting porno pornography. He even ordered police remove all the copies on the streets, but they couldn't find any copy because people were fighting for the copies. Mm -hmm. And yet in some areas, of course, it was really tough for my volunteers. They had to run and abandon the books, and some witnessed the burning of the books because people found out, and the moment you open the book, you see my face, and it's all over the TV and the media, so people could just tell what was the book about. But it was really fascinating because we got a lot of feedback, a lot of good feedback. Someone saying, I think my son is transgender, and I never knew this word existed. Others calling and saying, we never get to hear this. How come you've taken long when all the anti-gay groups are getting all this out? Uh, and so we got a lot, a lot. You, you were breaking the silence in, in many, many ways, and you have the website that everybody can go to, Kuchu Times, that's K-U-C-H-U times.com. Uh, to read about all that's going on in Africa. Mm. You keep up with everything there. You have your own uh, cable show that's, on, on, that's <laughs> online there, giving mm. us a run for our money. <laughs> but now, but what I'm sure what we're interested in, what other people are interested in is, there's a concern about foreign influence. So how can people help? Uh, how, is this, how does this work? I mean, you're reaching people all over, you know, how, how, can, how can people help? I don't know what people really mean by foreign influence. I, I, I've really struggled to, to really, uh, understand what that means because in my in my country they say we are being influenced by the West we are being paid to be homosexuals in the West and then that means we are not Africans so I wonder if 
if I'm not African, who am I? Exactly. Who am I? Yeah. So for me, I don't believe in the issue of foreign influence because when we get support from the West, even our governments get support from the West. Are they being influenced by the West uh, with all the donor aid that our government gets? So if we get support from friends and allies and colleagues who want to also see our movement move in a, dire a, a right direction, how is that influencing our work? When I when. To, to develop the Bombastic magazine, I went on internet, on crowdfunding, and I appealed to the whole world and said, this is an initiative <laughs> I want to do. I need support because I cannot get support from okay. my government. Mm. And I got support from people I don't know, people mm. from around the world, are the people actually who made this project possible. Wow. So how did they influence when I'm the one who actually told them, support this? So uh, people can support us in so many different ways. And can you, can you, as we finish now, can you just tell us what's great about living in Uganda? It's, a, it's one of the most beautiful places I've been to. Not because it's my country, because I've really traveled to different countries around the world, but it's really beautiful, the weather, and we, we have fresh fruits. You just go behind in your backyard and get a mango from the tree and just eat it. There's no chemicals and all this. And the people are lovely. People are just being... Um, in, People are just being indoctrinated by all this hate. And that's why we are called the Pearl of Africa, because we have really a lovely people. And the more we, we create attitude change, I think we are going to go back to where Uganda was. Uh, I'm very optimistic uh, for you and very grateful that you would take the time to come talk to our viewers, who mm. I know are very admiring of the work you're doing and uh, we'll take a look at your website kuchutimes.com and, mm -hmm. and find out more about what's going on and how they can help. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming thank you to too. talk to thank us. Thank you too for the opportunity. And congratulations mm -hmm. on everything uh, that you're doing. Thank you. It's thank very, you. very inspiring. Pleasure. Thank you for being thank here. You. Mm -hmm. Be careful. Getting out of here. <laughs> do, you, do, do you need your magazine back or is no, this for us? We get to oh boy, it. thank you very much. It's our Christmas present <laughs> in July. <laughs> thank you. Goodbye, Kasha. Thank you. Well, hard to follow that with local news, but we will attempt to. All right, well, we should update uh, any marriage news because really it's only been about three minutes since uh, same sex marriage became legal all across the United States of America. And including Puerto Rico, where the First Circuit has just announced that the ban on same-sex marriage is unconstitutional there. So the territories and uh, everything else are falling into line. But there are pockets of resistance. Yes. Uh, uh, there are... Well, especially in places like Kansas, uh, where, you know, Governor Brownback uh, finally said, well, we're, we're going to issue the licenses, and, and to some extent they're going to recognize them for insurance and health benefits, but not for certain other things. Well, they're taking their time. They're stalling, they're examining the decisions, they're looking at their own regulations. So they haven't quite gotten around, for instance, to tax filings <laughs> yet. Uh, but yes, you can probably put your uh, spouse on the insurance benefits, and you can probably change your name on your driver's license if you've changed your name in your marriage. And he and the governor of Texas and the governor of uh, Louisiana, uh, they're all doing these religious freedom executive orders that say nobody who has any religious objections has to have anything to do with this. Well, I, you know, I looked at uh, the discussion of Brownback's executive order because he and he simultaneously with announcing that they would, the state would now recognize that same-sex couples can be married and that that's legal, uh, he issued this executive order to say, but, you know, if you have a religious objection, you don't have anything to do with it. But it's really limited to what is already in place. Clergy do not have to perform same-sex marriages if they don't want to. Uh, and uh, and the state will not go after religious organizations that discriminate. But there is no non-discrimination law in Kansas, uh, except for maybe the town of Lawrence, and even that is limited. So I think it's a lot of bluster on these guys' part. Uh, a lot of it is, and uh, to the extent that they're raising real problems, that's all going to be litigated. The ACLU, Lambda, NCLR, they're all on top of this, and they're all going to go after them.
at these guys case by case, town by town. Well, but it is, it's kind of heartbreaking to see some of the YouTube videos of like couples showing up in a, a county in Kentucky to apply for a marriage license and be told, uh, I'm sorry, we don't do that here. Right. It's ridiculous. So, uh, uh, in fact, a clerk in Kentucky suggested that the system be changed so that people just buy licenses online. I think that's a great idea. Well, <laughs> in, in, like in North Dakota in Stark County, the recorder there said, I'm uncomfortable with issuing these licenses, so the commissioners had to vote to let the deputy uh, recorder issue them. Uh, it's a big jobs creation program by the Republican Party, I guess. Oh, uh, well, I, I don't all know. the clerks in Decatur County, Tennessee, resigned because they didn't want to issue same sex licenses. So there are some job openings in Decatur County, Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, but this is, this is it. It's, uh, it's sort of town by town, county by county, a few people stalling here and there. Toledo, Ohio. Uh, yes. And some 13, of them went, 13 counties in Alabama stopped issuing marriage licenses altogether. Well, the fact is that much as we have been talking about this for almost our entire lives <laughs> and the previous three centuries. And that's a long time. Yes. There are people who are just hearing about this and just having this smack them in the face. And if this is not something they're comfortable with to begin with, it is a big wrenching change for them. And they are, uh, some of them saying, whoa, no. And uh, I understand that it's going to take a little time to get past that. Uh, you know, Brown v. Board of Education, how long did it take for schools to get desegregated? Still. Yes, still, exactly, 60 years later. So uh, it, is, it is not a surprise that there would be resistance. I'm happy it hasn't been violent resistance yet and uh, that it seems to be limited to uh, small pockets. So, so On the other hand, I still want to prosecute all these these Republican presidential candidates, the clerks, everyone for treason. Well, let's I mean, uh, talk about some of the presidential candidates. I mean, Scott, Scott Walker is still saying he's opposed to same-sex marriage, but he let his husband, excuse me, his wife <laughs> and his sons. It's a his Freudian slip. His wife, well, you know, these days, and anybody can get married. Uh, he let his sons and his wife, who were all working in his campaign, speak out for same-sex marriage and say how disappointed they are in his position. But that's just a political ploy. And the governor of Ohio, John Kasich, who's about to announce his presidential candidacy as a Republican, <laughs> attended the same-sex wedding of a former aide saying, you know, he's my friend, I'm going to the wedding, uh, but I'm still opposed to same-sex marriage. That, uh, this is confounding But, but the me. Episcopal Church isn't opposed to same-sex marriage, and they have just approved, by overwhelming margins in both houses of their government, two liturgies for use by same-sex couples to be married. Uh, uh, it begins on the first Sunday of Advent, uh, which is sometime in the fall. But what they also still have to do is have, it, uh, have them approved by two general conventions, you know, big uh, conventions of the church, uh, to get them these uh, liturgies into the Book of Common Prayer. Oh, yeah. Now, I went to Episcopal Sunday School yes. for seven years, stopped short of being uh, confirmed. And uh, to be able to open up the Book of Common Prayer yes. and see a liturgy for same-sex marriage would be pretty stunning. There was an old Book of Common Prayer that was, it was changed in the 70s, and there was one guy at this church in Charlottesville where I went to school who chained his copy of the old book to the <laughs> pew. Because <laughs> he didn't like the changes. <laughs> I wasn't a member of the church, but I had friends there. Okay. Uh, well, Jimmy Carter says Jesus would approve of same-sex marriage. Jesus would have no problem with it. <laughs> because it's about love, and it doesn't hurt anyone That's else. That's right. Uh, all right. Well, uh, in Montana, <laughs> the dominoes have started to fall. One of the stars of the Sister Wives <laughs> TV show, Nathan Coll Collier, Collier, I think, has filed for a license to marry his second wife. Yes, folks, polygamy. He has, by the oh, way, been excommunicated by the Mormons for polygamy a while ago. Uh, He's testing the limits. Uh, speaking of presidential candidates, Chris Christie vetoed a surrogacy bill that would have uh, uh, assigned parental rights at birth to couples who use a gestational surrogate. 
Um, he, ve he vetoed same-sex marriage in 2012. Yeah. And, and he's still against it. In Oregon, the Sweet Cakes Bakery has been fined $135,000 for refusing to make a wedding cake for a lesbian couple. And please remember, these are about anti-discrimination laws. These are not about the marriage laws. The marriage laws don't require this. The anti-discrimination law is required in some places. Yes, and Oregon has a non-discrimination law, and this bakery uh, violated it. And again, there is a distinction between making a cake, which happens to be used for a same-sex wedding, versus uh, a cake that has some message on it yes. that you can refuse to Yes, because make. that's under the First Amendment. Uh, Michael Sam and uh, his fiance Vito have uh, split, and that was one of the reasons he was having trouble with the uh, football. And I believe he's he's back with the team, the Montreal Alouettes, and we'll see how he does there. They're still uh, in preseason. Uh, a couple of uh, uh, church-related marriage stories in Longview, Texas. The Moberly Baptist Church has suspended a musician who works for them because he's also an ordained pastor and he officiated at a same-sex wedding. Uh, so even though his job at the Baptist Church is as a musician, even though this what he did w at the wedding was entirely outside his church duties or any connection to them, they have suspended him and will consider firing him. I want to go back to Texas for a second because it is my favorite story of the week. A gay couple, it's in rural Hood County. Uh, they were told, uh, we need three weeks to change the forms before you can get this. The clerk has the unfortunate name of Katie Lang. <laughs> Her name is Katie Lang, <laughs> an anti-gay bigot. Um, and she also used her religious beliefs, uh, saying she wouldn't issue the licenses anyway. So Jim Cato and Joe Stapleton said that we've been waiting for 27 years and we were humiliated by the delay. Uh, but I think they finally got it, didn't they? Well, uh, yes, but I mean, it's, it was, uh, they were stopped. In, well, and that is happening here and there. In Marion, Pennsylvania, outside Philadelphia, uh, there is a Catholic elementary school called Waldron Mercy. Uh, oh, yeah. It has a very nice reputation, and they have a religious education teacher who is a lesbian and who, when she was hired by the school some years ago, told them that she had married her partner in uh, Massachusetts in 2007. Uh, she was hired by the sh school shortly thereafter, and the nun running the school said, well, uh, just don't talk about it. Don't let the parents know, just keep it quiet, and, uh, and we'll keep employing you as a Catholic elementary school, even though you're a married lesbian. Well, now a couple of the parents have found out, and they ratted her out to the archdiocese, and she's been fired. Well... Well, I mean, you know, the, the, the Pope was in Ecuador this week and said, oh, you know, all families should accept everybody and everybody's the same. Blah, here, blah, here, blah. Here, here, here's the thing. Until a lesbian can have your job, Holy Father, you are an anti-gay, anti-woman religion. Got it? And, and, uh, and as nothing long has as changed. You, as long as you brought that up, what we are working up to, and you will hear a lot more about from us as we go along, is this October Synod on the Family that they're Oh, I'm very much to. waiting for whatever they come up with to decide how to conduct my family life. <laughs> I'm not waiting for it to decide how to conduct my family life any more than I'm going to watch the Republican debates to decide who to vote for. <laughs> well, there you are. <laughs> but I will be paying attention for, uh, you know, enlightenment and entertainment. So uh, a year ago, the church, in anticipation of this, surveyed its uh, parishes and, and hierarchy and whatever for their opinions on a lot of subjects. And, uh, and we talked about that at the time, and we were interested in the fact that they were actually letting people say how they felt and, Shocking. and, and putting out questionnaires very widely. Well, they have now put out the working draft that will form the basis of the conversations at this October Synod. I want to see the raw data. Yeah, we would like to see any of it, but the Catholic LGBT activists uh, are very disappointed in this working draft because they say it does not reflect the full scope of the surveys that were conducted and in fact puts out a very narrow agenda which I would guess is not going to be favorable to us uh, and I don't our mean families. this in a flip way the Catholic hierarchy worships 
a false god. All right. Uh, by the way, on all the marriage stuff, we include tons of uh, links that you can find answer all your questions about it. Uh, the, the, all the legal groups have stuff. You can anybody who has any trouble anywhere in the country and in the Virgin Islands and anywhere else, you know, you, you there's a place you can go and find out. So uh, sign up for our email list, Andy Hum at AOL. I'll put you on the list, and you'll get all these links. And we go. And congratulations to the recently married, uh, very famous opera singer David Daniels, yes, who has picture. married his longtime partner there uh, David's in the, in the, in the white on the right. Uh, his partner, his husband, William Scott Walters, is on the left. And in between them, that <laughs> tiny person is Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who performed their ceremony. Tiny person with a big, big heart. Yeah, that was on June 20th before the decision, which is why Ted Cruz wanted uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg to recuse herself. Tough. Exactly. Um, so and congratulations to Jim Obergefell, who has just sold the rights to his life story uh, to 20th Century Fox, which is going to make a movie of, you know, he's the named plaintiff in the Supreme Court marriage case. Whose, so, hu whose husband uh, died. Exactly. So he and his he lawyer... Just, he just wanted to be on the death certificate. He was fighting for that little shred rights. of dignity. Yeah. And he got it. Okay. All right. Uh, in other religious news, uh, the well, I guess you'd call this religious news, the, uh, uh, the St. Patrick's Day Parade, which has declared itself a Catholic pr procession, now looks like it's going to let an Irish LGBT group into the next parade, and then we can retire from that 25-year battle. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Although there, will, Maybe. there may continue to be infighting. But, uh, Maybe. Uh, well, the story was that they had gotten rid of the really anti-gay chairman. Uh, John Dunleavy. Yes, but then you passed around a story that said he claims he's still in office. They're still fighting, so yeah. we'll see. Yeah. We'll update you in March. Uh, but the, uh, on the other side of the country, the Mormon church in Salt Lake has made a donation of $2,500 to the Utah Pride Center to help feed... Say that slowly. <laughs> the Mormon Church made a donation to the Utah LGBT Pride Center. <laughs> to help feed homeless youth, uh, which is a lovely idea, <laughs> and we appreciate their help. Although when one thinks of the hundreds of millions of dollars they have spent to uh, outlaw our relationships, we would wait for a little more but support. But they didn't win. We won. Yeah. Our side won. And uh, maybe this happened because Boyd Packer, 90, the leader of the Mormon Church's Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, died on, uh, I think it was, um, well, a, a week ago. Um, in 1993, he warned that three groups, feminists, homosexuals, and intellectuals, posed the greatest threat to the church. You had that right, Boyd. <laughs> Uh, and the uh, uh, Jewish faith is not outside of these considerations. The group Jonah, uh, do you have the actual, no. do you know what they're? Uh, or, J Jewish. Uh, ah, they, anyway, they're a, a very conservative organization that does uh, a advertise and practice conversion therapy for minors, and they have been under attack in New Jersey for this. And uh, several uh, young men and uh, parents who had been victimized by them went to court, filed a civil suit against them for damages, and a jury has declared that uh, Jonah is guilty of committing fraud by claiming that they could convert people uh, from homosexuality. Uh, in the, on appeal, of course. On Fire Island, I haven't been there in 30 years, but I mean, in Fire Island, they for 40 years, they've had a, an invasion from Cherry Grove to the Pines. These are the two All in fun. gay communities. Well, in the beginning it wasn't, of drag queens, because they used to not be served in the Pines and ah. things like that. So uh, they, this year, uh, the invasion, they come over on a boat. Uh, they, when they got off the boat, Pansy, who has been running this thing for 40 years. They're at, in the in, blue in, dress and, and the, the big, big white wig. Yeah. Uh, got off and uh, punctured inflatable dolls representing Ian Reisner and Matty Wiederpass, who are the gay traders who own the businesses in the Pines, but give money to people like Ted Cruz and Ron Johnson of Wisconsin and things. So it turned into a big demonstration. It was very nice. political. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks. 
Uh, all right. In uh, New York State, the uh, legislature has wrapped up its annual session. And once again, under the leadership of our very pro-gay uh, governor, Andrew Cuomo, has failed to pass a Gender Identity and Expression Non-Discrimination Act, has not made any progress on a ban on conversion therapy for minors. But he says he wants to tackle anti-trans bullying. <laughs> so the head of the schools, the school's chancellor, Merrill Tisch, for the Board of Regents says... How about giving us some resources to do it, Governor? Yeah. There's nothing in the budget for it. Uh, the uh, Danny, Danny O'Donnell says he's going to have a hearing about all this in the fall. Okay, good. Our uh, assembly member from the West Side, out gay. Uh, meanwhile, the legislature in New Jersey has okayed birth certificate gender change without demanding proof of surgery. That's a good thing. And congratulations to Harper's Ferry, West Virginia, which has elected a, a majority gay town council. Three gay men, one lesbian, and three straight people, as far as we know. Sounds like West Hollywood. <laughs> Harper's Ferry, West Virginia, the revolution has begun. Yes. Uh, uh, in uh, Washington, they held the White House Pride celebration, and it was interrupted by a transgender activist, uh, Genesette Gutierrez, who uh, interrupted Obama's speech uh, saying, release all LGBTQ immigrants from detention. Be quiet, be quiet, the others said, started screaming at her. Yeah, well, even <laughs> our president said, this is my house. <laughs> yeah, well, my no. house? No, 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 no. The, it's the people's house. Yeah, I don't think that was very uh, cute. Uh, Jenna said is a member of the group Familia QTLM. I'm not sure what the QTLM is, but you remember we showed a picture a couple of weeks ago of them demonstrating in L.A. against the detention and deportation of uh, trans immigrants and, and LGBTQ immigrants who face rapes and beatings in detention. Uh, the uh, Immigration and Customs uh, Agency has come out with new guidelines on how to treat transgender uh, detainees, but they're still being detained and they're still being attacked, and there's a lot of movement against this, and some Get Equal and other uh, protesters uh, showed up outside the White House within the last week or two, and six of them got arrested uh, protesting this. It's a big and growing issue. I wonder if Caitlyn Jenner will write about this in her new column. <laughs> She's going to be writing weekly editorials on the celebrity website, Who Say?, uh, on, on LGBT issues, and she's uh, at Huffington Post. And she's also going to be doing I Am Kate, debuting on E, July 26th. She was in town for New York City Pride, filming uh, for the E series, and people were getting some uh, very fashionable shots of her. I don't know if we still have one, uh, but she showed up in a lot of uh, designer clothes that people were commenting on. She's very glamorous. Very glamorous. Clearly fulfilling a, a long time desire for that um but uh and so keep the lesbians. The, oh and, and and sorry huh? um the show the long-awaited show on the learning channel i am jazz about the young uh jazz jennings the young transgender yes. uh girl is starting on july 15th i am jazz we missed, the, we, missed the, we missed the headline, lesbians won the World Cup for us. <laughs> That's uh, true. Uh, the United States, you all know this, ticker tape parade Friday in New York. Uh, but the star of the team, we got a picture of this, Abby Wambach, uh, ran over and kissed her wife, Susan Hoffman, there, over there, at the end of the match. Abby has been out for a long time. Megan Rapino also out. And uh, the coach, Jill Ellis, is an out lesbian. I hadn't been entirely uh, sure, uh, you know, uh, knowledgeable about her. Uh, I don't, I haven't heard anything about Carly Lloyd, uh, but uh, whatever. Uh, strong lesbian presence on the U.S. Uh, women's soccer team. And mostly what's interesting is they are out. Yes. You don't find a lot of men out, uh, you know, here and there. We talk about Michael Sam, but uh, congratulations to the U.S. women's soccer team. Uh, sad story in Crown Heights, Brooklyn, an anti-gay attack on a man at Carol and Utica, a, a woman named Sapphire Ellington, 18, and five others hit the man, hurled anti-gay slurs. Two of them have been arrested for at large charged with hate crimes and 10 other charges. This is, I mean, this is, you know, a whole group of people picking on one guy, mm -hmm. et cetera, horrible. 
Uh, the Na U.S. Navy has joined the Army and the Air Force in elevating the process of discharging transgender people. What that means is it has to go higher up the ladder uh, for someone to be discharged to an assistant secretary. You don't, uh, you know, local commanders cannot just discharge people okay. for being transgender. In Philadelphia this past weekend, uh, there was a star-studded 50th anniversary of the celebration of the first gay demonstrations there 50 years ago at, the, at, the, at Liberty Hall, run by people like the late Frank Kameny and Barbara Giddings, and Randy Wicker, who was still around, and he was there, and Jim Obergefell was there, and Wanda Sykes, and they all had a great time. Uh, oh, uh, I just wanted to make note that the uh, the great documentary out in the night about the yes. uh, Newark lesbians who were charged. I with, saw it. It's uh, absolutely wonderful. It, it is, and it is available at PBS.org through July 23rd. This is a group of lesbians from Newark who came to Greenwich Village to live their gay lives, lesbian lives, and this guy started harassing them, so they defended themselves, right. and they get arrested as a lesbian gang, tried on under gang rules, basically, yes. in the court by a gang judge, and they are they, are, they had the book thrown at them. They did. They spent years in prison. They were just horribly, horribly treated. And it's a really important and enlightening documentary, Out in the Night at PBS.org. In Virginia, the U.S. Justice Department says in court that trans students must be allowed to use the restroom that corresponds to their gender identity it is sex discrimination. Joining a, a lawsuit by the ACLU, a good move by the Department of Justice. In West Virginia, uh, the Division of Motor Vehicles has caved under threat of a lawsuit. Will let uh, transgender women use photos of how they live their daily lives. And These women went in to get uh, driver's license, we're told, remove your makeup, look more male. And while Facebook continues to have controversy over how it treats uh, people of transgender experience and drag queens and things, more than 26 million of you changed your profile pictures to that rainbow flag uh, <laughs> over your faces. Yeah, we have about 20... 10 more minutes. All right. Uh, should we hopscotch through international news? Uh, okay. Oh, the guy who said he was gay bashed in Utah wasn't. That was a fraud. Yeah. That was sad. Uh, okay. Uh, in Seoul, South Korea, they did manage to hold their Pride March and Festival. Ten th tens of thousands showed up, uh, but several thousand Christian protesters also showed up. And a gay couple, up. inspired by us, is suing to get for the right to marry there. That's right. A movie director and his husband, they, uh, they, were, they held a wedding ceremony in 2013. They want to yes. recognize. And by us, we don't mean you and me. No, no. <laughs> we mean the U.S. marriage decision of the Supreme Court. They don't mean us, Court. we mean U.S. However, in Istanbul, <laughs> Turkey, uh, oh. the police prevented a pride march by, with tear gas, water cannons, uh, the government said, uh, well, it's Ramadan. We can't have these things Rubber here. bullets. Uh, and a group called the Young Islamic Defense, which is a, a, uh, yes. a megaphone for the government, has put up posters all over town calling for the murder of gay people. Yikes. Murder. It uh, uh, on a brighter note, Austra in Australia, it looks like a cross-party bill for same-sex marriage will get a fair vote in August. But the Catholic Church is writing letters to businesses that Who support same-sex marriage expressing their grave concern. And in Northern Ireland, the only part of the United Kingdom that doesn't have same-sex marriage, the new poll there says that 68% of people support it. Catholics, 75%. Protestants, 57%. And as we said, Mozambique has decriminalized homosexuality, and that uh, new law has taken effect. And in Cyprus, they are moving to a parliamentary vote on civil unions. Right. Uh, Kyrgyzstan, however, uh, the no gay propaganda bill, which is like the Russian bill, only worse, has passed the second of three readings in parliament, 90 to 2. Uh, okay, Guernsey will recognize same-sex civil partners and allow adoption. Uh, Russia banned the Moscow production of Gross Indecency, the three trials yeah, of yes. Oscar Wilde, which is a wonderful play. Moises Kaufman. And the police in Havana, Cuba, barred independent LGBT activists from the uh, Mariel Castro Pride Parade. AIDS news? Sure. I got a better story from Cuba. The World Health Organization says Cuba is the first to eliminate mother-to-baby tra HIV transmission. Yes, although that is not necessarily 100%. 
Okay. It's, it's close. Oh, well, they, uh, the Supreme Court upheld Obamacare. That's very <laughs> important for us, six to three. Well, we didn't even talk about that last week. Uh, we were doing something else. <laughs> and, uh, and But by upholding it, it upholds subsidies for the poor, including those who are HIV positive. That yes. was really uh, the decision. You've there. read about the catastrophe in Greece, the austerity program, uh, They've uh, a needle exchange was cut. So HIV infections, new ones, are up 200%. Malaria has also returned. Uh, a new study of bisexuals says they have higher uh, disparities than health disparities than gay, lesbian, or non-gay people stemming from socioeconomic vulnerability, which means uh, higher rates of poverty. So, uh, what, okay. Uh, in entertainment news, I've been watching a lot of uh, movies and series online that people have been sending me uh, little screening links to, and one of them when I was away and Chris Cooper, thank you Chris Cooper was sitting in for me, you mentioned my devotion to horse stories as a, a stereotypical black beauty. lesbian. Well, the black stallion is oh, really, sorry. yes. Excuse uh, me. That was a oh, I'm not an expert on this. And the island stallion. But So there's a new movie called Of Girls and Horses, which is a lesbian movie by Monica Troit, uh, who is a, a longtime filmmaker, uh, available now online and DVD from Wolf Video. And I thought, oh my God, this is gonna be the greatest thing I ever saw, lesbians, horses. <laughs> it's a little slow and meaningless, so I, I can't say it's, uh, it's sweet, but the, uh, not much point to the it. The Philadelphia LGBT Film Festival called Q Flix. I wish I'd, well, I'd know more about it before, but it's winding up on Sunday, and it's closing out with this movie called Those People at the Prince Theater. Uh, looks very interesting, set in New York. Uh, and in LA, they're having the Outfest uh, LGBT Film Festival. Uh, there's a movie there called Stuff that is about a longtime uh, married lesbian couple, 14 years together, two daughters. Uh, and it's all about their relationship and one of them having an affair and the other grieving her dead father and how they negotiate all this. It's interesting. It's a, it's a pretty good, uh, it's called Stuff at Outfest. And we had these folks on the show uh, who did The Absolute Brightness of Leonard Pelkey, uh, written by James Lacine, performed by James Lacine and only James Lacine, uh, <laughs> and directed by Tony Speciale. It starts at the West Side Theater on July 11th. And Tony is Here also, in New York? Yes, in New York City, uh, West Side Theater. Tony is also working on a play about the witch hunt of gay sailors in 1919 and Newport, led by Franklin Delano Roosevelt when he was <laughs> Assistant Secretary of the Navy. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we all have things in our background. Ooh, we're ashamed yes, we of. do. We do. We all do. And he was a great president. Okay. Now, was uh, John Singer Sargent a great artist? I, I very much like John Singer Sargent, and a lot of people dismiss him as a society painter, and he did a lot of society portraits. But this is his friends that he's painting, so he, you know, he's more into it. And he had a wonderful life. So this is at the Metropolitan Museum. Uh, it's, uh, and it's very revealing of his homosexuality. Uh, yeah. you know, which would, uh, this is a picture of his lesbian feminist uh, friend, uh, Violet Paget. Uh, the painting is called Vernon Lee. Uh, the, the next one is of W. Graham Robertson at the age of 28, a gay painter and uh, a man of the theater. Uh, look at that painting. Uh, well, go back to the go back to the previous one. Uh, you know, the kid did not like wearing a coat in the summer uh, because because it was so hot. And he said, well, "The painting is of, of your coat. It's not of you. <laughs> you know, come on." And then the last one. Uh, if you have any doubts of whether he's gay, there's a lot of these male nudes that he did not display in his lifetime. This is one of a, of an African American man. Uh, so you know. Uh, it's, um, but the Met doesn't do enough to bring out a, enough about his sexuality, you know. They've uh, always been reticent about that. Uh, they have, about a lot of artists. Yes, and Greek, so. Greeks and Romans. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And, and Americans. They sold the Warren Cup, they didn't want it. <laughs> so you can see a lot of these pictures, yes. but the, the little cards yes. that explain them do not have the story. No, uh, yeah, well. Well, yeah, we have to go online. Colm Toy Bean wrote an article about his sexuality. I mean, it's all there, and he's a wonderful artist. Uh, another, uh, in that same vein of the John Singer Sargent uh, uh, 
objects. Uh, there's another movie that's uh, available now online that was a big hit at Outfest last year called Tiger Orange. Yeah. Are you familiar with a uh, an adult movie star named Johnny Hazard? No, I'm not. <laughs> I figured. But uh, he now goes by Frankie Valenti, and he is the star of this uh, movie. It's a family drama, gay brothers, uh, well, what, Tiger Orange. Well, one, one, of, one of the ones at the, at the QFlex Festival is about, and I'm forgetting his name, but he was the guy who ran Falcon Films. And he gave the seed money for the human rights campaign. Yeah. And he, they show him giving this speech, say, and he's a tough guy. And he goes like, you, he says, the reason we're here and we're so advanced is because of my films. We put, you know, it's like what Lou Mileta said, we put the male body on the map. I mean, the, what he did, sort of, and he did high production values for male porn, uh, he said had a big influence in terms of people being liberated. Well, well, it did in all sorts of ways, and uh, certainly these guys who had a conscience and a vision and who took the profit, uh, first of all, not from my point of view, nothing wrong with uh, the movies they were making, and uh, the fact that they turned that, those profits into community institutions, whether it's Gay USA or uh, other organizations, is just brilliant and wonderful and terrific. I wish more people would do that. Yes. <laughs> so there. Uh, I also. Uh, Oops. This tabletop is not nailed down. <laughs> if you haven't figured that out in 20 years, uh, I, I, City and State is a local New York City uh, political blog website. Uh, Newsfeed. Yeah. Uh, publishes a couple of times a day, and they interviewed Chris Quinn, our former uh, city council speaker who ran for mayor and, and lost uh, last time out lesbian. And they interviewed her recently and talked about her career and her life, and that's available online at the city and state uh, website if you want to see it. But she says she does want to run for office again, and she, in fact, does want to run for mayor again, although not against Bill de Blasio, she said. Well, she's working for Cuomo now, isn't she? She the is. The governor? And Maybe she, she can straighten him out. Well, she was asked about uh, <laughs> mistakes she made, and she said, you know, I, I did make mistakes, and let me see if I can find this here. Uh, I was too cautious. Oh, yeah. I was too conservative, and I wasn't bold enough in She was my the front race. runner, so she, yeah. uh, but they often run cautious races. Maybe a lesson for Hillary Clinton. Uh, I should hope so, because I Don't think... Don't be cautious. Be yeah. bold. People want bold solutions, because we've got a lot of problems in this country that remain, even though we're protected under the 14th Amendment now. Well, look at what's happening with Bernie Sanders. He is uh, drawing crowds and getting attention because he is being bold in his pronouncements. And when he was interviewed about this decision on the marriage thing, and we don't support a candidate here, he said, don't think for a minute this started with the Supreme Court. This was a movement that did this, and that's how things happen. And that's a perfect note to end on, and we will see you next week. Thank you. Thank you.